are people of hope alive in the mystery growing in faith learning to love we are people of hope throughout all of history held by the one who will never let go we are dead in our striving for wealth and for might but god rich in mercy has loved us to life we are people of hope alive in the mystery growing in faith learning to love we are people of hope throughout all of history held by the has made us created in Christ for justice and mercy to be our way of life we are people of hope alive in the mystery growing in faith learning to love we are people journey every day We're led by the word saved by grace We are people of hope alive in the mystery growing in faith learning to love We are people Well, thanks for joining us uh, for worship today. Uh, today we celebrate a festival we call Pentecost. That's why you see everything all in red and lots of candles and things like that. More about that later. Uh, today we gather for worship. We reflect on scripture. Uh, we gather to lift up prayers in these troubled times. Uh, we still grieve. We're not able to gather physically in the same place, but as been watching the statistics, uh, the cases here in Pierce County continue to rise. They've doubled from last week. So this is absolutely not the time for us to be relaxing uh, and gathering together. This pandemic has uh, claimed 100,000 American lives. Uh, plus this week we have all the reaction going on to the slaying of uh, George Floyd dominating the news. So we, we come in many ways looking for hope and encouragement this day. And I encourage you to, uh, to uh, as you worship, to, to hang in there all the way through. At the very end, there's this wonderful uh, video. It's an amazing assembly of uh, over 1,200 musicians uh, by the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians with a powerful Pentecost hymn. If you're new to joining us for online worship, a special word of welcome to you. Um, just to let you know, we'll be celebrating Holy Communion a little later in the service. Uh, we invite you to gather your own bread and wine so you can participate with us if you desire uh, to do that. As we gather today, we begin by centering ourselves. Again, our settings are different where we are gathering, but our hope is the same, to gather and worship today, to encounter God, to be fed, to be nourished, to be able to offer our thanks, to give our praise. So let's take a moment as we begin simply to calm ourselves, to rest in the arms of God, this one who has promised to be with us always as we gather in God's name. 
going to give you about uh, 30 seconds of some, uh, some waves from Lake Superior. Just I uh, love that calming sound of the lapping of the waves, just to help us breathe and slow down a little bit and center ourselves for worship today. Dear church, the Lord be with you. We gather to worship today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin as we often do with a confession of sin and then hearing the promise of forgiveness. Uh, to help us with that today, we're going to use the words uh, from Psalm 103. Let's confess our sins, our thoughts, words, and deeds against God, against our brothers and sisters things that we've done and things that we have left undone. Hear the good news. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, not repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As the Father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Well, this festival of Pentecost that we are celebrating is a focus on the gift of the Holy Spirit to the, the people of God. Let's sing a song to help us uh, focus there. Uh, the song will also serve as our, our prayer of the day. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Yeah. 
Good morning, friends of joy. Happy Pentecost. The psalm appointed for this day is Psalm 104. I read from the 24th verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things, both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you have formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open their hand, your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die they return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. The word of the Lord. Our scripture reading we just heard from Psalm 104 lifts up the image of the spirit of God as that which creates life by breathing breath into it. And on the flip side, he says, when breath is taken away, then we die. It's a powerful image that we've been seeing and hearing in the media, that of breath. Um, I was reading a blog the other day uh, by a former bishop of mine. He framed the death of George Floyd as a lynching. It really jarred me when I, when I read that. He said that's something he never thought he would see. It doesn't matter if it was a knee or a rope that cut off the breathing, the result was the same. Now we know by this time, this, this policeman that took George's life has been arrested. He's been charged with murder and we have hopes that justice will be done. But unfortunately, this was not just an isolated incident. We have to wonder if it had not been filmed by a bystander, would we even have known about it? We know that we've got a lot of work to do to get at this underlying issue of racism. Uh, so there's much to do. Uh, let's, so let's, let's uh, just start with a word of, of prayer today. Come Holy Spirit, stir up courage in us to face injustice, to name it, to confront the wrong, but also to lift up what is good, that justice might be our way of life. Amen. Well, well, we'll talk about this a little more later, but first I want to turn to the scriptures. But before we do that, we want to use a bit of liturgy to help uh, open our hearts to this message, our hallelujah. We find the account of Pentecost in the book of Acts, second chapter. Uh, instead of me reading it today, though, I have a little a video portrayal of that reading. Uh, the words will come up on the screen uh, so you can read them. If you have non-readers with you, I invite you to read the words aloud so they can hear the story as well.
So that's the story of Pentecost. And, and as the book of Acts continues, it tells the story of how these followers of Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit, gave birth to what we call the church. Again, not a building, a community of faith. But how do you portray something that's not physical, something that's spiritual? We, we have to use metaphors. Uh, and, and so some of our best metaphors are those of energy, right? Uh, the wind that we cannot see, yet we feel its mighty power, or flames of fire which change whatever they come in contact with. Through the centuries, Christians have done pretty well at, at uh, handling what it means to be father or son, or even creator and savior, but this spirit thing has always been harder to grasp, this mysterious aspect of God's presence in, among, and through us. But it's the spirit that, that Paul addresses as he writes this letter to the people of Corinth. We've been looking at this letter the last couple of weeks. If you remember, the people of Corinth were uh, divided up into different factions, and Paul writes this letter to them to help bring the different groups together. So he does a couple of things. He reminds them of the power of the cross, right? He reminds them of the importance of the resurrection. Uh, he reminds them of the centrality of love to bind everything together. Today, in the, uh, this part of the letter, again, he's calling them to unity. Uh, there were some things that were going on, though, that were, was dividing the people. Things that were supposed to be bringing them together was actually splitting them apart, like the celebration of, of the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you remember back in, in, at this time, in the Roman Empire, they didn't have weekends. So Sunday was not set aside as a time for, uh, for worship. So the people had to gather after work. Problem was, there were some who were wealthy who, who had time to gather earlier, and by the time the working class people joined them, the bread and the wine was all consumed. And so Paul says, you know, you may be eating bread and wine, but it's not Holy Communion. If you're not showing concern, if you're not showing love for one another, it's not just about you and your spiritual needs, it's about the needs of the whole community. Well, from there he goes on, um, and we're what we call chapter, chapter 12, and, uh, and it goes like this. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of services, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates them all in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, by the faith, by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning the spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated, activated by the one and same Spirit, who allows each, allots each one individually as the Spirit chooses. Now, just as the body is one and has is one and has has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into the one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we've all been made to drink of the one Spirit. All right, so that's that's our section of the letter for today. Again, unity is not the same as sameness. There are a wonderful diversity of different gifts that are given, but they're not given to give advantage of one over another. It's given for the common good. Gifts are given not to be stockpiled, or, uh, but given to be used for the common good. Gifts are given not to draw attention to themselves, but for the common good. One body, many parts. It's the ideal we have, we, we, something we, we strive for. Now we, we often fall short, we, and we, that's why we begin by confessing our sins, that we haven't done this as well as we should. But it's something we keep trying for. There's a hymn we sing sometimes uh, about the work of the Spirit. Uh, the song is called uh, Spirit of Gentleness. Uh, but the title's a little deceptive because uh, sometimes we think of the Spirit as something quite tame and it's anything 
but tame, but it can be gentle and powerful at the same time. Last, uh, last summer, Diane and I visited the, the, the Grand Canyon, uh, one of our bucket list kinds of things. Uh, Awe-inspiring in the best sense of the word. To see the power of water, simple water, being able to cut through rock, literally moving mountains. And guess what the work of the Spirit can be like as well? Relentless, never giving up. Uh, but as, as the song goes on, I, I like the second metaphor even better, which speaks of the spirit of restlessness that stirs us from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. Let's sing a couple of verses of the spirit of gentleness. Well, this morning for our statement of faith, we only, I want to use part of uh, Martin Luther's uh, small catechism. It was a tool that he created to help parents uh, pass on faith to their, their children. Um, and in this section we're going to look at today, he's talking about the Apostles' Creed, particularly the third article where it talks about the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to read part of this um, uh, responsively. So this is what the third article means, the meaning. He says, I believe I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in true faith. In the same way, he, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it united with Jesus Christ in one true faith. In this Christian church, day after day, he fully forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. I invite you to greet each other with a sign of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you.
Well, our reality is that the world we live in is in desperate need of the peace that we just shared or that we, we've talked about here. Not just from the ravages of the pandemic, but this last week again from the, the scourge of racism. So we see once again the death of an unarmed black man at the hands of the police. The media has been saturated with disturbing images of, of rioting going on. Uh, and so I've been trying to wrap my, my mind around that. To help us with that, though, I want to turn to words that Martin Luther King Jr. said. He spoke them uh, over 50 years ago. Unfortunately, it sounded that they could have been, sound like they could have been spoken yesterday. Let me say, as I've always said, and I will always continue to say, that riots are socially destructive and self-defeating. I'm still convinced that non-violence is the most potent weapon available to oppress people in their struggle for freedom and justice. I feel that violence will only create more social problems than they will solve, that in a real sense it is impractical for the Negro to even think of mounting a violent revolution in the United States. So I will continue to condemn riots and continue to say to my brothers and sisters that this is not the way. Continue to affirm that there is another way. But at the same time, it is as necessary for me to be as vigorous in condemning the conditions which cause persons to feel that they must ga engage in riotous activities as it is for me to condemn riots. I think America must see that riots do not develop out of thin air. Certain conditions continue to exist in our society which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. But in the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. What is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last few years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice, equality, and humanity. And so in a real sense, our nation's summers of riots are caused by our nation's winters of delay. And as long as America postpones justice, we stand in the position of having these recurrences of violence and riots over and over again. Social justice and progress are the absolute guarantors of riot prevention. It's easy for those of us in relative safety and comfort to criticize the violence that we witnessed this last week uh, as the riots have erupted. It's harder for us to know the kind of fear and anger uh, that has been simmering for these years that finally reached this boiling point. We desperately need peace, but we're not going to find it until we are able to address these underlying issues of race. And it's a, it's a huge task, one that it sometimes seems impossible. There's no quick fix for it, but it's critical that we keep working at it. We're not born uh, racist, right? It's taught. What can be taught can be unlearned or retaught a different way. The process though, is complicated, right? It's complicated by a lack of trust. It's complicated by centuries of structural racism that's been built into the very fabric of our society. It's so prevalent that for some it has just been normalized. So we have to begin by seeing it, recognizing it, naming it. For those of us who are, are white, our white privilege means that most of the time, we don't even have to think about race. Not until events like this last week 
sort of makes it unavoidable for us. I don't think there's probably any more displays of racism now than there has been in the past. It's just that with cell phones everywhere, it gets recorded, it gets shared, it can't be ignored. But the change that needs to happen needs to happen when we recognize in ourselves our own bias. It has to start there. And it's not, it's not enough to simply not be racist. We need to stand up and be anti-racist, to say something, to do something, to talk to our kids, to say something to a neighbor, to use our voice, to use our vote. Change begins with us. And we realize this is not simply a matter of of trying harder. Racism is not a, just a different opinion that some might hold. It's, a, it's an evil, right? There's a spiritual dimension to all this as well. And so we gather for prayer, for peace, for guidance, for forgiveness, for reconciliation. I wanna share a little litany. Of what actually, Tom and, and Carol Peterson uh, put this together. They uh, they have roots in this Minnesota uh, Minneapolis neighborhood that's been in such turmoil. And so they said, can we put together something? So here's something that they've shared for us to help us bring some focus to our prayer. South Minneapolis is my cradle and crib. And I spent many of my formative years in her backyards, vacant lots, lakes and parks, the Richfield pool, and in Mount Olive Lutheran Church, located on Chicago Avenue, a block south of the Lake Street Sears store. To see the destruction of many familiar places fills me with horror and gloom. I want some good to come of these days of COVID anxiety and callous killing and pent up rage. I pray that Almighty God will join me with all God's children, members of Jesus' body, so that we can make good. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we are grieved at the meaningless death of George Floyd by the hands of those sworn to protect him. Come Holy Spirit, Spirit and bring, bring your comfort. comfort. Oh Lord, we are afraid when we see and hear about the rocks and flames and looting that make up the violent and seemingly unstoppable response to the injustice of George's death. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, and bring, bring your peace. O Lord, we are appalled to realize that the privileged life we live adds to the injustice that fuels the violence. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, and bring, bring the assurance of forgiveness. forgiveness. O Lord, give us the heart of Jesus to speak and act in love to all people, friends and strangers alike, those who look like us and those who do not look like us. Come, Come Holy Spirit, Spirit, empower us with your wisdom and guide us with your compassion. Come Spirit of God, breathe your power on our dark world and change our hearts that we may live in the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to continue with uh, the prayers of our church. Sometimes it's difficult to find the words, and that's okay. In one of Paul's letters, he writes about the, the work of the Spirit in our lives, and he says, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes the sighs too deep for words. We're gonna use a song, uh, by Dakota Road. In fact, I got a recording of them actually singing it that we're going to use uh, for our prayers uh, today. Let us rest in the presence of God. Breathe in deeply the breath of life. Breathe out all that we need to let go of. The Spirit Intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. All oh, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. All oh. 
stir up in us your Holy Spirit, Lord. Make us one body with many parts. Help us to appreciate the diversity that you bless us with. May your Spirit call forth in us gifts, and may we be faithful in using them for the common good. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Oh, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Oh, Stir up in us your Holy Spirit, Lord. We remember all those who are in need of your healing presence, whether it's physical or mental or spiritual. Bring them healing. We give thanks for all those in the healing arts. We pray for strength and courage as you use them in giving the care. Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express all the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express all. Stir up in us your Holy Spirit, Lord. In these times of uncertainty, keep us grounded in you. Kindle in us a hunger for justice. Give us strength for the journey. We pray for your wisdom for all those in leadership guide us as we negotiate our way through these difficult days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, if we were gathering in person for worship at this time, we'd be inviting you to bring your gifts and offer them to God. Uh, so many of you do that electronically. Others of you like to write it out, uh, write out a check and, and be able to, to hand it in in person. It's hard to do it in person right now, so just drop it in the mail and we'll be uh, glad to be able to receive that. Uh, your generosity has allowed this ministry of joy to keep going strong in the midst of this time. So thank you for your ongoing, ongoing gifts. Let us pray uh, a prayer for, for these gifts we offer. Lord God, we offer these gifts for your kingdom, our lives, for your service. Bless them. Use us where it is most needed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We gather now around our Lord's table. So I invite you to get out your, your bread and wine or your juice or crackers, whatever form that takes for your household. Much like these first followers of Jesus who gathered in their homes to break bread, we, we recognize that God is present in this sacrament as well. And so we remember how Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks. He said, drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to, to share bread and wine with one another uh, with these words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. 
We've got some music we'll put on while you're sharing communion. It comes from uh, Bells of the Bluff. Uh, you'll see some familiar faces as you see them uh, with Lee and Joan Northhouse and, and Robin Keyport. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and always. Amen. All right, a couple uh, announcements. If you remember to wear red today, uh, great. If not, no problem. But if you, if you did, why don't you take a picture, send it in. It'd be fun to collect those and, and see uh, uh, our worship settings um, as well. We continue to offer our worship online. Uh, I mean, the, as I mentioned earlier, the number of cases here in Pierce County have doubled this week. This is not the time to think about relaxing social distancing. There will come a time, but it's not now. Now, I've been hinting the uh, last couple of weeks about we might be having a drive-in worship experience. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, Wednesdays uh, during... Uh, during the summer last year, we had a campfire worship. Well, we're not gonna gather around a campfire, at least not yet, but we might gather in the parking lot in your cars. Um, I can't get out of your cars, but we can. We have an FM transmitter uh, at the low end, 87.7, and we've got a half mile range. And so as we gather in the parking lot, we'll have a devotional time. Simply share some, uh, some scriptures, some prayers, a reflection, and we're going to do a dry run on, on Wednesday. If you want to see how this is going to work, we'll get all the bugs worked out. And then uh, June 10th, we're going to launch it officially. Uh, again, the building is still closed. You have to stay in your cars. But it's a chance for us at least to, to physically be closer than we are now by still staying safe. So stay tuned for more details on that. Remember, church is who we are, not where we go. Following worship again, we'll have our, our Zoom fellowship hour. hour. And the, the link gets sent out with our email uh, on Saturday. And uh, if you didn't get that, just uh, get a hold of me. I'd be glad to share that, share that with you. Receive now the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 
So until we gather again, let's uh, stay home, uh, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember to mask up when you're uh, heading out in public. Uh, to send you on your way today, though, I want, as I mentioned, I want to share with you this uh, wonderful Pentecost hymn put together by 1,200 musicians from the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians uh, doing O Day Full of Grace. So I um, hope, you, hope you enjoy that. God be with you. Uh, good encouragement for us until we can, uh, until we can gather again.